Hello, uh, survivors of the nuclear apocalypse. Uh, welcome back to Atom RPG and playing hardball. Yo, we... Yeah, well, we strolled through the city, talked to a lot of more or less interesting and very interesting people. Um, and I just noticed something. We, we, I think we did not go here to the side, right? So we went around and checked out all these uh, market stands here before going to the, over there, to the chip. And we need to get into these buildings here, right? So there are people here as well. Before we go into this building that is housing this uh, chamber of commerce, the the government or whatever it is of Krasnoznamene. There's someone here. In front of us is a man in his 50s, even though he looks much older. Actually, I think he, in my opinion, he looks rather young here, but whatever. His sunken eyes, thin, motionless legs and near constant dry cough. <coughs> All are signs of a serious illness. Oh, that's not good. But the tattoos of weapons, military equipment and abbreviations of pre-war divisions on his parchment like skin tell a story of a past spent in the, in the army. The sick man looks at us with a mix of surprise, fear and disgust. He starts talking with a throaty falsetto. Everything will be fine across us are many Ambrose. You'll get a place to stay, a pension, Ambrose. Everyone will respect you, Ambrose. The high-pitched parody of a female voice is replaced by a thick soldier's bass. Uh, I think I spoke that wrongly, huh? huh? So this was high-pitched? Uh, hi that should have been the high-pitched uh, lady. <laughs> what? Now I'm confused, but yeah, maybe he is too. Foolish woman, uh, yeah. I got my own place, but everybody and their uncle too keeps parading in it. Who are you and what the hell are you doing here? Oh, oh, you are living here and here I thought that this place was abandoned. <laughs> we need to cuff as well. Uh, yeah, still a bit radiated there. So kind sir, let's try this again. Yeah? You again! What is it you want from old Ambrose this time? Come on, let's have a bit of a chat. Oh my goodness, I a while away here. Crippled and forgotten, but some hoodlums just can't leave me alone. Come on, tell me what you want to go away. Well, tell me a bit about yourself. Military past, unclear future, that's original, right? Well, that's a bit laconic. Another question? Well, what do you do for a living? What do you think I do? The old man lifts one of his legs with his hands and then lets it go. The leg falls back down like a dead weight. Oh. Do you suppose I run marathons? Nope. Crescent Starmany is paying me a pauper's pension. Damn it to hell. Wow, you even get a pension? Cool. Another question? And what do you think about Crescent Starmany? They have respect for the old and the crippled, but not too much, of course. Just enough to stop me from wanting to assemble a mine and blow up their damned government bunker on one nice sunny morning. Ahem, that's still something, I guess. Let me ask you something else. Well, any rumors you'd like to share? What's the use of sharing them? People have been talking for I can't remember how many months now. What that some shady people in Paragon are doing, God knows what, are not the disguise of a barbecue shop. But our local politicians still go there to eat. Well, I guess the food there is good. Well, so I think, if you don't know any other rumors... No, only that one about the barbecue shop. Then, well, I actually, I do feel like eating something right now. Okay, well, see you around. Sorry for disturbing you, good sir. So this here is then apparently maybe some form of an alarm clock, lantern battery, or yeah, let's pick up everything. We are in the post-apocalypse and we just need the resources, right? Oh yeah, Ukrainian vodka. That will be helpful as well. Toilet paper, let's hope no one misses it. 
go here. Well, feels like someone invited us for dinner or something. Tea. That's a glass. They can keep the glass. Ah, there's gasoline. Okay. Let's make our companions partners in crime. Yeah, so by the way, speaking of crime... Um, so, last episode... We actually did something that many people would consider despicable. Which is... We participated in the unfaithful behavior of a certain... Person, female person, housewife. You remember, right? We discussed some music with her. And yeah, the thing is, many people would probably think that this is uh, that this was very, very unethical. And I would actually like to discuss this a little bit. So what do you think? Was it was it very unethical? Because we engaged uh, in uh, in the breach of the marriage or matrimonial oath. Yeah, or were, were, was it actually only her fault because she did that and we are, well, well we, we didn't really hurt anybody, right? That's the thing. So we were just the third party and uh, on, on the other hand, I mean, we were not really th seducing the, the woman um, very much. Yeah, so, yeah, or, or also well. Like to a degree, I think, yeah. I mean, she said she didn't want to, but in fact, she really wanted to. Um, oh, by the way, I think no one should get any drugs here, right? Because they will just use them up. These guys will just use them up, the painkillers, yeah. No, you are not getting any painkillers. Let's check this. Before our guys, they are wasting the stuff. Well, I mean, they can have some Kaspara meat, right? Oh, he doesn't have any. Oh, yeah, no, he. Eh? Where? No, he doesn't have any. Okay. Yeah. But he's supposed to eat them when he's close to dying, right? So, Fidel. Fidel is quietly whistling some tune to himself, seeing that we want to talk. He nods encouragingly. What is it, Arbalev? How are you feeling? Healthy as a horse, gracias for asking. All right, let's change the subject then. Um, let's, let's discuss tactics. Um, let's talk about your fighting style. Yeah, friendly fire, that's fine. Running away only on the brink of death. Healing up if near death. Okay, that's good. Okay. It's a great plan. And then here, Hexogen. Did we actually speak with him about this? Hexogen is mumbling something, moving his finger. Seeing that we want to talk, his face splits into a lopsided smile. How are you feeling? Healthy like Pony Filov's 28 men. Well, before the attack anyway. Uh, stop huffing and puffing. Let's change the subject. Let's discuss tactics. Let's talk about your fighting style. Currently I shoot, but I try to be careful. <coughs> you try to be careful, huh? Friendly fire. Never shoot when there's a chance to hit a friend. Oh, fine, fine. No, I never shoot if there's even a slight chance to hit a buddy. I never back out of a fight, no. You need to retreat when you are near death. I'm always going for the closest enemy and I heal up if wounded. Yeah, the healing. And you need to attack the weakest so we can kill them quickly. Let us talk about healing. Heal up when near death. So, okay. And that's fine. Let's continue. Alright. Saving. 
Yeah, so, and uh, I mean, there, there are, of course, uh, different aspects to think about, like... Um, with the woman, with the with the housewife, she 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 was obviously or apparently she is a, a notorious a betrayer, right, of her husband. So she she cheats evidently often enough, or probably, yeah, at least twice. We have to say, and uh, even in a way, you know that, uh, yeah that she evidently doesn't care much about her husband if she leaves her underwear somewhere else, right? Um, ah, this is where we were. Ah, yeah, this is the weapon store. Here we are. This is the guy. The black-bearded man in a leather jacket is lovingly cleaning the components of a disassembled AK. As he does so, he whistles an unfamiliar tune, totally enraptured with what he's doing. Oh, let's let's study what he's actually doing. We follow the man's actions to the best of our abilities. He cleans the weapon parts according to a particular system, and we believe we recognize it. Uh huh. Let's figure out his methods. We try to figure out how this man's gun cleaning method differentiates from ours, and we soon begin to see a pattern. We take careful note of the man's actions before he sees us watching. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do I sense a lover of quality firearms? Great. I've got the best stuff in the wasters. You can't find these babies anywhere else. Well, good. Show me what you've got. Oh my god. By all the gods. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful sight. AKS-74U for 7,000 rubles. That is, of course, way beyond what we can afford. That's 4,600 for the PPS-43. This Soviet submachine gun did a good job during World War II after the war it was used by internal troops. Now oh, that is actually... That's awesome stuff. But nothing for us. However, we do see some ammunition here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good to know that he's here. And the guy, oh God, yeah, and he's rather expensive. He's a good trader. <clears throat> that is very sad. So maybe, which ones do we actually need? We don't need any armor piercing. Let's just check this out. Exogen. So he's using the SKS. Ah, that's 7.62 by 39 millimeters. Yeah. Um, the thing is, however, he's actually not the best rifle shot. He's way better with pistols and SMGs. Which is why I actually I wanna uh, craft a pistol for him. I think that's actually way better. But that we will do in another episode and later on sometime. Mm. But it's good to know that the the ammunition guy is here. And we gain 15 points automatic firearms. Now that's great. Oh, cool. We got firearms. Automatic weapons. Now we have automatic firearms 50. That's great. The bitted arm stealer is looking at us. Well, can we talk a little bit first? We are a nice enough person, so the storekeeper nods and smiles. Sure, let's chat. What's on your mind? Well, tell me about yourself, friend. Captain Second Rank, USSR Marine Corps, Infiltrator, Military, Scuba, Diver and Weapons Expert. And more recently a trader, but not just any trader. Thanks to my old connections, I always have the best stuff around. An honor to speak with you, Captain. Can I ask something else? Curiosity is a virtue. I like the guy. What do the authorities think of your business? 
the same thing any of them think about unregulated arms trade. If you know the right people, they just look the other way. Ah, there's that, I suppose. Let me ask something else. Curiosity is always a virtue. Any advice on weaponry? You look like a capable sort of fellow. Not as capable as my old compadre, Major Porunin, but still, I doubt there's anything I can teach you. The trader rubs his chin, thinking something over. Okay, maybe you didn't know this one. When shooting an MG, try screaming as loud as you can. Keeps your ears from popping due to the noise of the shots. Okay, yeah, hey, thanks for that. Let me ask something else. Did you, do you know any good rumors? I heard that Abraham, the old book trader, has some issues with a gang of lowlifes killing his couriers. Quite the dilemma, right? Yeah, let me ask something else. Also, we already know that. Um, how about we look at your weapons again? So, there's this stuff. So, yeah, well, this is like way out of reach. So we need these here. But I'm also I'm kind of I'm kind of not willing to spend too much money on ammunition actually. Because we wanted to save the money for the books, right? To increase our skills. I think that's probably the better investment. However, not if we die. Right? But yeah, but now it's good that we know that he's here. Okay. Thank you. I would love to discuss a little discount, but yeah, we are not getting it anyway. So that's actually a good thing. Oh, and we we got another automatic firearms increase. Thanks to that screaming advice. Screaming when... Oh, yeah, that's actually great. The others didn't get it though. Hmm. Yeah, so, so Hexogen is actually way better with pistols. I think we probably... Ah! We do have a pistol that is nice, right? This one here, the custom air pistol. Here, let's give this one to Exogen. We only have eight pellets left, though. So let's see how he fares with that one. The pellets... I think we can make pellets anyway, right? It's only one shot. Can we make pellets? Can make uh, we can make metal bowls. Oh no, we can't make petals. Pellets, sorry. Oh well, anyway. Okay. Yeah. But that's fine. And uh, there was someone had someone had a uh, recipe for the zip gun. So. For a better zip gun, actually. So I think that's that's all fine. Okay then. Did we did we go in here? No, I think we left the left side completely out, right? Oh, this this is the militia station, huh? And there's no one here. So let's snatch the toilet paper. Someone will be angry when they sit there and notice that uh, there's no toilet paper left. No, there's someone here. Okay. Okay. But no one here at the reception. And this person. Okay, let's talk with the criminal. Uh, oh, a tall convict passes his tin mug against the bar in an unfriendly cell. As he notices us, he shakes his head sadly and talks to us in a lispy, howling voice. We are not sure if we should answer him at all. What are you staring at, eh? Uh, how did you end up here, man? Out of stupidity. I'm a member of the Powder Men. We're the ones who blew up the bridge next to the old factory. I can't recall why now. This is the long and the short of it. How long are you going to remain here? As long as necessary. What matters is that my soul is free. Okay, I see. Well, enjoy your stay. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk with the with the boss, I guess. Like here, the the militia captain or something. 
Oh, he looks grumpy. A short-tempered, middle-aged man, so we can directly see that he's short-tempered. In a relatively new uniform, bulges his eyes strewn with bloody streaks at us, his nostrils flaring vehemently when he realizes we want to talk to him. I've long since lost count how many men I keep here to patrol the streets, but no, you're coming here in scores anyway. What is it? What will the respectable citizens charge the chief of police with instead of turning to one of his subordinates? Got bitten by a mermic? Mother-in-law took all your money? The TV set died? Hello, comrade chief. Haven't seen you at my place for a while and decided to pay you a visit. <laughs> Are you suggesting I should start drinking? I'm intoxicated with this life already so much I'm sick of it. Ahem. Just wanted to talk, right? Well, being so nervous is bad for your health. As the police chief listens to us, he starts smiling. His smile grows on and on to the point where it looks unnatural and his eye left eye starts twitching. Oh. <laughs> oh, but thank you, Doc. Who would have thought? Thank you for your kind advice. I'll do my best to take care of myself and my nerves. Despite the officer's unexpectedly friendly voice, our reptile brain suspects the police chief is mere seconds away from jumping at us and throttling us. Oh. Oh, that's actually interesting here. I'm serious, sir. I can show you an anti-stress exercise. We make the police chief sit in the chair, go behind him and start massaging his temples in the back of his head. A minute later he heaves a surprising sigh. We finish and then teach the nervous officer how to perform the massage on himself. You must be devil himself, you are. Hell knows if it feels easy at work now. I'm too used to shouting and breaking things here, but perhaps this will help me to keep it together at home. I really want to thank you and give you these 100 ru rubles, you devil. Well. Glad to be of service, sir. Now let's change the subject. What else do you want? Um, well... I actually... Well, there are actually a lot of things. And I, I think our conversation does have some potential. But maybe let's start with a little chat first, huh? The man silently takes a hard ceramic mug full of steaming hot coffee in his hand. Waits it, squints one eye, looks at us, assumes a comfortable position to throw it, sighs and returns the mug back to its place. Oh. I'm not a monster. I understand why my idiot assistants weren't of any help in this case. What can I ask of them? But still, why chat with civil officials at all? Aren't there enough old women outside or gossipers, chatty crones? What do you need from me? Well, we could introduce ourselves. Oh, my name is Sergei. Sergei Ivanovich. Sergei Ivanovich Streletsky. Happy now? Well, nice meeting you, sir. Another question. Spit it out. How do you like your job? It's not to everyone's taste, that's for sure, but someone has to do it. The general secretary trusts me and I don't want to let him down. Well, I'm happy for you. Another question. Spit it out. What can you tell me about Krasnoznamini? The city's all right. We keep everything in order. Thank God. Had we not, it would be a total mayhem. Terrible. Another question. Go on. Heard any good rumors? To be honest, I remember only reports, denunciations and anonymous letters I receive daily. If you are after rumors, better talk to the citizens. Well, maybe later. Um, how about we talk about something else? Because there is business to discuss. The chief of police slaps himself on the forehead, annoyed. Yeah, the streets of Krasnos are many untrodden enough. People don't understand where the lawn, lawn ends and the road begins. We need to hire someone who would be loafing around doing nothing, thus solving this terrible problem. Or, ah, uh, wait, are you indeed a mercenary? Since autumn, I'm quite interested in the head of Anton Baby Butcher from the crime group Dogs of Anarchy. Reason? Multiple murders close to the place called Otrad Neue. Okay, I accept the task. The dogs of anarchy. Well, we are not we are not even talking much about that. We are just that's that's something that sounds uh, really good for us. Great. Not many people are willing to take care of people like the scumbag Anton Baby Butcher. I expect to hear from you in 4 days. Don't be like other people in my life. Don't let me down. Uh, 4 days. 
Actually, we had we had some other things on our mind, but well, okay. Now let's change the subject again. I'm here to complain about one of your subordinates, by the way. We're about to report an unpleasant incident when the police chief stops us with a commanding gesture. In written form. He passes a sheet of paper to us. We notice his look is full of hatred and his left eye twitches. Uh. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> so he's... Uh, I think he's he's just bullying us a little bit. Uh, but yeah, right, just a second, make up a complaint. Let's do it, right? Or uh, maybe we have... I have no time for bureaucracy, bye. So I think we can do that later on. So, but let's save. And then we talk with him again. Business to discuss. Also, oh, no, okay. Oh, oh, no, we can't do... Oh, come on. Okay, well, and now I saved over it. Okay, that well, doesn't matter. That would have been nice to check it out. Oh, come on. Now, oh, well. Okay, so off role playing, I have to, I, I have to criticize. Um, that I, being a completionist, that is something I don't really like. That you, that you can only, you know, in the conversation. That you have basically one shot, yeah. You can't even uh, talk with the person, and then get back or something. I mean, it's more realistic, of course, but uh, yeah, especially here for the let's play, I can't and I don't want to uh, read everything aloud all the time. But also, like clicking through a dialogue is also kind of annoying, yeah, and uh, and not very nice and entertaining. Uh, just to click through everything very quickly. Yeah. So that's actually really not so good. That's not such good game design. Yeah. And it's always like that. Or nearly always. That we are losing the... The opportunity. Or the option to say something. Well then. So here we are. What time is it, by the way? It's 19.30. So I think we are actually going to the... Harbor now. And there was someone who would teach us some melee weapons, actually. Ah, there is more stuff here. Can we actually... Oh, can we take that? Oh, yes, we can. Okay. But no one's watching, right? So and now it is time for the... Bordeaux, Bordeaux or something. Saving, there's someone just came out of there. Hello, good sir. A man with a harsh, unshaven face and unfriendly eyes greets us with a short nod as we notice that his left arm is covered in washed out, barely discernible tattoos. His other hand falls to rest near a long, heavy hunting knife hanging on his belt. What's on your mind, man? Oh. Well, I'm interested in your tattoos. Did you get them in prison or are they just decoration? The question plainly irritates the man. He quickly conceals his tattooed arm behind his back. Greetings from the old life. I don't think about those marks and you shouldn't either. Well, hey mate, my entire family has been to prison. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, we didn't, didn't we get anything? He waves his hand in annoyance but still answers. I suppose there's no harm in telling it to someone who's been there. I got sent to the slammer when I was 20. A so-called friend of mine framed me, the bastard. I thought I was helping him move an old fridge to the dump. Turned out it had his girlfriend's corpse inside. The rest is history and my tattoo is my nickname. Ah, now we get something here. The townie shows us his arm, upon which is a washed out, barely discernible picture with the word giraffe underneath. Oh, but we know something, right? Wait a second, now you're trying to take me for a ride? Giraffe is no ordinary nickname. Spit it out, Slick. Shut your fucking mouth! The man jerks his arm back and turns so his right side is towards us. Bastard, you got me! He calms down a bit and lowers his eyes. Fuck it! 
I got knocked down the prison ladder early in my sentence. I was sitting on the john and heard my cellmate, the jerk, fussing about on my bed. Looking over the curtain in our cell, I was still new then and didn't realize that's not allowed. So they called me giraffe. Someone who looks over the curtain when he's on the toilet. Yeah, that's a thing. And the next five years were utter hell. I had no one to talk to and did the dirtiest jobs. Bastards. I even considered offing myself just to end this BS. Thoughts of my margarita were the only thing that stopped me. <laughs> okay, guys, we are trying this one, yeah? I just saved before the conversation. The bitch is howling. Where you everybody's bitch? How big's your hole now? Oh, God, this is... Uh... Well, but that's just something some people would say in this situation, right? And with this hole, we mean, of course, our mouth, because, uh, yeah. Like, as a giraffe, he needs to talk much, right? Kids? Right. The man's eyes go red with rage. You fuck, I'll show you what, who has the bigger hole here. Relax, man, I was just messing with you. Get out of here, I don't want to start a fight, but I don't want to see you either. Ugh, once a bitch, forever a bitch. Okay, well. That's, of course, just a parallel universe. Uh, we, as polite good guys, would uh, not talk with him like that. Because that's also rather uncooperative, right? Here, there. So here, interest in the tattoos. Speechcraft, hey, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But however, you are not telling us all the truth, right? The whole truth. Well, so here. Could happen to anyone, bro. Bro. Yeah, you were new to the prison. You didn't know what, what was going on. Now that you are free, the laws have changed. Let's forget about it and discuss something else. Go ahead. Actually, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Why not? Until boar hunting season starts, I always have time. What can you tell me about yourself? My name is Gina. I'm a hunter. You may have seen my wife, Margarita. She often goes to the market. We moved here together not that long ago, and we live a decent, uneventful life. What else can I tell you? Once I nearly got killed by a mutant when I was hunting, and the man next to you is the one who saved my life. While I, while I was unconscious, my wife went to Fidel for vodka, which he gave her for free to make compresses. For the first time during our talk, Gina's face opens up in a friendly smile. Oh, what I did doesn't deserve that gratitude, amigo. Oh, he's really... That's really nice of Fidel, huh? There are two things I had about you, bro, and your freaking modesty is one of them. Ah, what's the other thing you don't like about him, huh? The way my wife looks at him. The man laughs loudly and claps Fidel on the shoulder in a good-natured way, but something in his eyes shows that he takes the subject a bit more seriously. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you could be a stand-up comedian with those jokes, Gina. Yeah, I could, if you think about it. That is certainly an interesting story. Another question. What else? Well, do you only hunt boars? If we are talking about delving deep into the forest for days on end and sleeping in tents, then yes, only boars. Well, and moose sometimes, or bears if I have an opportunity to sell the meat. As for smaller game like myrmix, scolias, spiders, them, I hunt all year round. I got it, okay, can I ask another question? Now that you talk about your hunting trips and stuff, do you actually deal in anything? Oh, there's something interesting. Hair fur. I think we, we could try that. That's actually rather cheap for three of them. 47 rubles. Do we have anything we could... And he's also like just an average trader with 80. How about some Gorilka? That's 15. So how about two bottles of Gorilka? Oh, and milk. The milk is good against radiation.
I think we should uh, drink the milk. Why didn't we do that before? But yeah. Okay, is there anything else? We don't have any more knives left. Ah, the sheaf. Ah, but we usually get 14, right? Or 13? No, it uh, doesn't matter. Well, I mean, he does He does have his hunting rifle. Siggy. Yeah, but I'd rather keep one for tinkering. So let's give him the sheaf. Anybody else have something? Oh, and by the way, so the gun guy didn't have a uh, black powder. That's actually not so good. Because we need 20 units, I think, right? 20 units of black powder for the lady at this farm. North of uh, Red Fighter, that Red Fighter village. Okay, no, no. We don't have anything. Let's give him the sheaf. And let's get rid of this bottle as well. And then we need to give him two rubles. And that's that. That's good. Okay, well, so did you hear any rumors lately? I mostly hear hunter's tales. Here's one. People say that during the war, one bomb landed right on top of a herd of deer and the radiation fused the animals together into a single creature. It was huge, taller than any house, a ch chimera of many hooves and horns, and also possessed a mind exceeding that of a man. They say this beast wanders the wastes to this day, leading other deer to pastures and contaminated by radiation. To pastures not contaminated by radiation. And if it meets a hunter on the way, it instills a thought in his head that he should kill himself. People call this Chimera deer across, uh, aristocracy. I sure wouldn't want to run into that. Another question. Um, and what can you tell me, uh, tell us about this place? I'm happy for the most part. You can find thick forests teeming with game not far from here, even though I suspect the number of animals is dwindling year after year. But I dismiss these worries. Surely if nature survived even the war, it can't be dying now. Well, perhaps the war was just the beginning of the real end of the world. But yeah, that those are maybe too dark uh, thoughts. Let's talk about something else. Um, but actually nothing comes to mind. Well then, uh, nice talking to you. Um, see you later then. I'm not sure if, if we run, uh, if we know his wife, it's her. Ah, that's the one. Okay, one more, uh, just a second. And now it's time to drink the vodka. The vodka. Oh, she's, she's running away again. Why is the game not pausing? Oh. Something went wrong, right? Because the vodka is supposed to give us two strength, right? What's there? Yeah, and we need two strength for her. For that skill check with that lady. Uh, sorry. Right, or had, what, what was it? Yeah, it's strength eight, okay. I wonder how high the chance is that we get two strength from the vodka. I don't want to drink two bottles or anything. Plus one strength. 30% effect, okay, well. Okay. Well, in the meantime, let's think a little bit more about ethics and uh, the aspects uh, of us 
cheating with the wife. Well, we didn't cheat, only she cheated. Um, and I would be interested in, uh, in about knowing what you guys think. Yeah. Um, because, as I said, it is quite possible that you are. Oh yeah, there we are at eight. Yeah, that that you say no, it should always. It, it's never okay for nobody. And the woman was was indeed honest, right? She said she was married. And we did it anyway. Yeah. But yeah, let's do this one here first. A woman in her 40s with a barely visible gray streak in her hair and uneasy black eyes that dart around greets us with a good-natured smile. So, we've met at last. <laughs> You're an interesting man, a man from nowhere. Uh, well, happy to meet you too, but have we met before? This is a weird reaction to me. The woman winks at us and stifles a laugh. Not in person, not in person. I, Yegoria Mikhailovna, am free of any relationships and very open to interesting rumors. I've been interested in you ever since people started talking of some unknown man who came to, to the Othrad Neue Gate. You've been to many places so far, yet no one's recognized you, even though all the local residents have been to the suburbs at least once. You've turned up out of the blue, or perhaps from under the ground, eh? Oh... Yeah, you know where curiosity led the cat, right? Don't repeat its mistake. Our strength makes quite an impression. The woman winces away in fear. Oh, okay, actually, I didn't uh, intend that. No need to get so angry so quickly. I, I was just being curious. The old woman has nothing to do, so she pokes her nose in other people's business. Relax, okay? Now that we understand each other, let's change the subject. Well, okay, we need to protect our identity, right? Sure, why not? Although perhaps you could answer a couple of questions first. The moon waves dismissively as if she's been asked this too many times. You seem to like this questioning people around. Let's just omit this. What's your name and tell me about yourself. You pester everyone with... We know what you really want, don't we? Rumors, and I have plenty of them. Sweet, fresh rumors. Well, that is that is something nice to hear for a change, actually. What do people say about the Chamber of Commerce? Everyone fights. We simple folk fight for bread, they fight for power. There was a guy called Yashin who climbed up the, la uh, the career ladder, but then his fellow chamber officials ate him alive and spat out the bones. Now he sells some crap in Othrad Neue, like a total loser. Goodness gracious. Well, I have another question. Before we go on with the rumors, what actually do you have and could you barter with nothing? Okay. Well, you could use the, the broken bottle, right? But we don't have... We, we only had one. Yeah. Like a lady with a broken bottle, right? But okay. Are there any rumors circulating in the suburbs? The most discussed rumor is standing next to you. Eh, Fidel, do you remember Margarita, my friend, whose husband lay conscious while you two... Unconscious, she meant, I guess. Fidel passes his finger across his throat imperceptibly and makes an angry face. While you did absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. This is what I call fidelity and true friendship between a man and a woman. Well, truer words have never been spoken, right? Can I ask another question? Always happy to chat. What do people talk about in the city center? They harbor no trust to the police after the recent intake, all because of a couple of bad eggs. There are good people among them who fulfill their duty, but even they will cover up for a corrupt officer in their ranks. Why? Oh, this makes people think them all trash. Well, I guess one hand washing the other, mother, right? Another question. Are there any rumors from other regions? A friend sends me postcards sometimes, and the latest she warned me against going to bed during a storm. After one night storm, all of her village had the same nightmare, about a voice in the dark and a yellow door, and blah blah blah. So terrible it was they couldn't work for days after that. Uh, wait a second, what's this blah blah? What? What? Blah blah. I'm telling you, there was a storm in the village when a friend of mine lives, where a friend of mine lives, and they all had the same dream about voices in the dark and a yellow hand and blah. 
For a second, the woman's face is distorted with sincere blood-curling horror. Her eyes turn glassy. A second later, she relaxes and continues with a calm smile. And other stupid things, you know, dreams can be weird, so you might not even want to go to sleep. Oh, that's actually interesting. There must have been some form of event, and I think she's... Uh, there's something that... Uh, that that has some form of effect on her, huh? But well, so I feel feel at ill at ease. Let me ask you another question about something else. Um, but yeah, actually nothing comes to mind. So let's it's time to go. I think saving our progress. Oh, there's even another person. This old lady. A smiling old woman, or oh, she looks, uh, she looks like positive. Smile, o smiling old woman slowly walks the streets of Krasnosnameni. She om uh, almost walks into us before noticing us and lifts her tear-filled eyes on our level. Again, I have not noticed you, dear child. Ah, sorry, my eyes are not the same. Okay, we already met her, huh? And we never introduce ourselves, but it's fine. So, okay then. And now. It is time. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh. Hello. But she, there's something about her, something negative, huh? A tall, slim, black haired girl who wears a tiny headscarf greets us with a kind look, a friendly smile, and a firm handshake. I, I have kind of a bad feeling with her. Hey there. Wow, I'm so lucky to meet you. My name is Vaya. What are you doing here in the city? Are you here for work reasons or are you just relaxing? Uh, you're lucky to meet me? Have we met before, Vaya? The girl smiles even wider and gives us a friendly touch on the shoulder. Oh, you. I always feel lucky when I meet a stranger. A stranger that's so interesting and mysterious. I'm looking at you and I sense it. You're actually able to become a millionaire. What? A millionaire? Where did that come from? The girl almost jumps when she hears our question. She inhales a lot of air and starts talking. Attention six. Oh, we notice something. We notice that her tone is completely false. She is not making a friendly conversation. She's just repeating some text she learned by heart. I am glad that you have asked me, citizen or city guest. See, I don't tell this to any uh, just to anyone, but you seem like an adventurous type who knows that risk pays big. You are in luck because today the famous Krasnoznameni Casino celebrates the day of adventure. The smallest risks ever for the highest rewards. Visit the casino today and earn yourself a life of luxury. Hmm. Ah, there you go. Well, all those fake smiles, all that talk, just to get me into a shitty casino. Yeah, this year, I guess. So, sounds... Let's do this both. So, first, sounds interesting. Say, now that we are such good friends, maybe you'll join me for a game or two. The girl's, the girl's eyes start shifting in their sockets as if she's looking for a quick way out of an awkward situation. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, hey, I've got some errands to run. Maybe I'll meet you there after you play some bets. Then I'll probably n well not really join you. How's that for a plan? Yeah, great. But but I still want to talk. Can we change the subject? What? Answer some questions for me, okay? Hmm. Not what I really want to do, but if you make it fast, you're a local girl. What difference does it make? Uh, and what can you tell me about the city? A city like any other. Any more questions? Yeah, what do you do for a living? You still didn't get it, wow. Okay, and do you know any rumors? I don't listen to rumors. Okay, well, do you barter anything? Well, you do have some rubles, actually. But it would probably bet be a bad idea to give you any weapons, I think, right? Especially not for 30 rubles. Tja. No buttering there. Okay, well then. Changing the mood. Okay, but I wanna. I just wanna explore the other. 
uh, option to talk with her, but she's obviously she's just working here. I'm working, I'm always working. The girl smiles even wider and gives us a friendly touch on the shoulder. Ouch, a serious person finally working is so cool and mature. And you know what? I think relaxing after a hard day of work is much sweeter than simply relaxing all the time. That's why I'm here to recommend to you a great way to relax. Uh, relaxing is good, what's on your mind? The girl almost jumps when she hears our question and then yeah, we notice that she's actually just trying to lure us into the casino. And then all those fake smiles, all the talk, just to get me into a shitty casino. The girl looks at us wide-eyed and angry. Listen here, I'm not sit shitting on your line of work, so don't shit on mine. The boss wants every lowlife who comes into town to hear about the casino. That's why I'm standing here, you got it? If your feelings got hurt in the process, it's no longer my problem. Ah oh, yeah, that was <laughs> that was a quick twist. Can we change the subject? What? Answer some questions for me, okay? Um, not really what I want to go to do. What what do you do for a living? You still didn't get it. Wow. Yeah. What a change of mood, right? Okay. So, but that's actually quite fun. And let's have a third go on her. She's got some funny lines there. And there was some other option. So here, I'm resting. Why are you asking? The girl smiles even wider and gives us a friendly touch. Good for you, honey. Why not play hard after working hard? Also, why not earn a million rubles as you relax in the best place in town? Tee hee! What are you talking about? Earning a million while relaxing? Whoa! The girl almost jumps and then yeah, spools off her phrase. And then... Sounds interesting to say now that we are such good friends, right? Oh yeah, no. Oh, hmm, yeah, sounds like a million rubles. I'm sure I'll visit the place. The girl falls out a smile and a friendly wink. Yeah, you do that. It's a cool place. Um, made for cool people, just like you. Hehe. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I already gave my answer. Yeah. Change the subject. What? And let's yeah. Ask about the stuff quickly. There you go. And no rumors. Okay. All right. Then yeah. Anyway. Good talking to you, Vaya. But that's fun. So we now now we know that this here is actually more the Yeah, the red the red lantern part of town, right? 1946. Who's that? Ah, the bouncer supports his back on the wall. He's seemingly sleeping. The eyes of the tough guy are hidden by his cap. Yeah, that was it would be fun like to pickpocket him. Huh? I guess then he starts punching. Let's look at the bouncer. The man is wearing a thick jacket, probably to look like a badass. His cap is so low, his eyes are covered, and you only get we get, only get to see the tip of his nose and his mustache. The man's chest is slowly going up and down. Seems like he's enjoying some quick nap. Okay, yeah, let's check his pockets. Failure. Ah, <laughs> then it went up. We carefully get our hand closer to the man's pocket as he quickly lifts his head and looks at us. So, what are you doing, huh? Wanted to wake you up, that's all. Okay, you wanted something else then? Do you get to fight often? Not really, people know better not to act like shit around me and those who don't know, well, we need to feed the fishes in the harbor somehow. Aha. <laughs> What's the casino like? Do you treat people fairly? Uh, or rather, are you even allowed to sleep on duty? Sure thing, if everything is nice and safe, but remember, I never sleep, never. Okay, what's the casino like? Do you treat people people fairly? I'm not a gambler and I won't advise it, just a waste of money. Oh yeah, okay. I see I should go. But let's talk again. Hey, how's it going? The man looks at us, lifting his cap a bit. Everything is pretty calm. Just don't start any monkey business here. I deal with hooligans pretty quickly. Okay, so I see. Well, I better go then. Oh, they have some live music here. Okay. There's a beer. Oh, there are slot machines. Okay. Let's talk with the people first. This here. The moustached man gives everyone in the casino quick once over as he shuffles a deck of cards. Seems like he's not even looking in our direction, but we still feel he noticed us. This is my informer from the city. 
Fidel, my favorite client. Hey, can I ask you some questions? Yeah, or rather, in, yeah. I'm interested in some information. Information, who I'm listening. Heard anything about a military group coming into the city? Maybe so, but see, there's a slight problem. Dealing with folks from Atom in the city is risky business. The local authorities believe that helping you people out is high treason. Okay, fine, I get it. How much? Stay calm, dear fiddle, stay calm. The informer smiles and gestures us to come closer. 10,000 rubles cash, no haggling. I stuck my neck out for fiddle for too long. I won't risk for free any longer. That's just laughable. Let's go, Arpolev. I am sure we will find another way to get the information we need. You do, you fellas. I told you my price. Don't like it? Don't pay. But no info until you do. I need to think about it some more. Can we change the subject? Oh, we can't, we can't even barter with him. Okay. Um, can you answer a couple of questions? Oh, no, 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 buddy. I only sell information. I'm not the one for leisurely talk. I see. Well then, you got some cards. Wanna play a game? Sure, you know the rules of the atomic blackjack. Uh, refresh my memory. No problem, first each one of us gets a card. Next turn you must grab another. The goal is getting the card value of 21 points. Yeah, okay, so it's the normal blackjack. Huh? To succeed, you get the bank. If you overshoot and get more than 21, you lose. If nobody gets 21 points, the person with the highest score, as long as he didn't overshoot, wins. Yeah, easy. Got a deal. Ah, yeah. Aces are 11 points. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So, I'm actually, I'm having the caravan stuff in my head now, as where aces are 1. Caravan from Fallout New Vegas. Okay, so aces are 11, kings 4, queens 3, jacks are 2. Okay. Yeah, and other cards are not even used. Easy, right? Oh, really? So no numbered cards? Well, well, then let's do it. 11 for aces. So. Yeah. Let's bet 20 rubles. So. Queen. Okay, one more card. Well, but then it's just like basically four aces. Four queens. Four jacks. Yeah, and for kings. And, yeah, well, jack. One more card. Ah, oh, yeah, well, 16. And the probability to have another picture card is higher. So let's take one more card. Okay, 19, yeah. Show your cards. Failure. He's got 21, okay. I want a rematch. 20 rubles. Gambling. One more card. 15. Oh. Yeah. Another one. 18. Oh, that's so bad. Show your cards. Another failure. One rematch. 20. 4. 15. So let's have another one. And with 17, another one. 19. Oh. Show your cards. He's got a, another 21. Uh, this guy is a, is, he's a crook. Huh? And that's children out there that's why you shouldn't gamble in the first place it's indeed like the bouncer said is it's a waste of money because the bank always wins and uh, i think yeah that's actually one of the point the reasons so we've got attention seven ah because we are drunk of course yeah why are we double drunk oh because the the vodka made us super strong, but especially dumb, huh? What was it again? Ah, yeah. Okay, well. So let's rather talk with people. And that way the time is going on. The man looks confused as if he was just robbed or scared half to death by something in, his, in this establishment. But he's just sitting there alone with a glass of hard liquor. His gaze travels towards the floor and stays there even as we come closer. On his shirt there's a sign which reads Yegor. Is he working here? Leave me be, alright? A man's soul can't handle some revelations. He doesn't look like he wants to chat. Well, do you barter anything? 
You've got a rotten toadstool. Yeah, well, we are leaving you alone then, as you say, comrade. And then this gentleman, we see a stoop man with a white beard bending over a mug of muddy beer. He seems to be looking for something in the dirty mug and sighs every time he realizes this something is not there. As we approach, the old man cheers up. My oh my, who do we have here? A wary traveler looking for an evening of stimulating conversation? A passerby, perhaps, or rogue seizing up a helpless mark? Tell me, friend. Uh, well, I was looking for some interesting inf conversation. The man smiles broadly and takes a sip from his mug. Today's your lucky day, my friend. You're in the right place to hear an exciting story. One of these stories might even be followed by an interesting offer. But perhaps you would like to ask a few questions first, find out who you're talking to and so on. Yeah, I think you are a player of Dungeons and Dragons or something, right? Well, yes, I'd like to ask a few questions. The man drums on the tabletop with long, thin fingers. Questions, questions. Well, why not learn more about a person you plan to do business with? Ask, I'm listening. Well, who are you to start with? My name is Ivan Chertikialo. In the olden times, they would have called me Master of Ceremonies, the Keeper of the Ancient Spirit. These days, they mostly call me a lunatic. But they are all so wrong. Oh, so wrong to call me that. Okay, and then another question. Of course, what do you want to know? What are you doing here? You can call me an amateur historian. Seeing that we are unlikely to have any future, I've taken to studying the past. Oh, how delightful it is. Yeah, well, I have another question. What can you tell me about this place? This hole boasts a glorious past just like the entire city. It used to be great and now it's in tatters. It's all so sad. But perhaps one day someone will be able to right this historical wrong. Who would that be, I wonder? Can you ask another... Can I answer... Uh, can you ask... Uh, un answer another question? Of course, what do you want to know? Have you heard anything interesting lately? Hmm... Perhaps the story of the pseudo kids will interest you. A long time ago there used to be a boy scout camp for the party elite. The nation's cream of the crop were gathered there to be schooled in communist ideology and loyalty. To learn how to fight and die for the ideas of Marxism-Leninism. People say not all of those kids were evacuated in time. There are rumors that some of them still wander the wastes in their old pioneer uniforms like ghosts from the long dead past. But hunters and rangers have discovered this legend. They say that what looks like a boy scout from afar at a closer glance turns out to be a disgusting mutant. A deformed sheep or goat mutilated by nature so badly it resembles a tiny human figure. They say if you shoot such a mutant it will cry out like a child to warn its brothers of danger. That's why people in these parts are afraid of the night. It's full of nightmares you wouldn't wish on your deadliest enemy. Wow, that sounds terrifying. How about we barter a little bit? Oh, you don't have anything, not even money. Let's change the subject. Well, let's discuss what you want to tell me right from the start then, huh? Some story, right? The man nods, a small smile playing about his lips. He apparently doesn't care about anything as much as he cares about sharing the story. My friend, I promised you a story, but I'll start with a question. <coughs> what would you say if I told you that a mere 150 years ago, the city we are in right now, this godforsaken hole, was the most interesting and merry place in all the Russian Empire? Hmm. Who knows, many years have passed and anything could have happened since then, I believe you. And also, I agree, this place is, well, is still merry, especially after the third bottle, huh? But yeah, who knows, everything's possible, the man shrugs. You may be right, young man, times change and traditions fade, but it is impossible to restore at least some fragment of the glorious past, for this place can indeed boast of a great past. This city, given that horrid Bolshevik name Krasnoznameni, was once known as Igrograd. Count Roevsky, Empress Ekaterina II, favorite nobleman, founded it. By the will of his wisest architect, the city blossomed with dozens of gambling houses and other attractions the Count could not create anywhere else due to the church's restrictions. Igrograd became the capital of amusement. 
Competitions in ping pong, dwarf tossing, billiards, gorotki and even chess were held here. And those who thought to put an end to the merrymaking were confronted by a threatening copy of the shield belonging to the Count, the founder of the city. This shield hung above all the gambling and drinking places, a message to the enemies of fun. This place is under the protection of the noble house of Rovski. Okay, now I've heard the story and actually we heard about it already, right? A, a little bit, Rovski. And shield, we found some parts of a shield already. Or do you suggest I do? Well, you see, the thing is that Count Rovski loved the city. He even requested in his will that his original shield be hung at the city's biggest tavern. So everyone could see it and remember his legacy. That's much better than burying the relic in a grave, isn't it? But unfortunately the shield remained there only until the revolution, after which the Bolsheviks confiscated it and sent to a local histori history museum. Many years later, after the bombing, museum curator Boris Sveklov fled Krasnoznameni with whatever valuable artifacts he could carry to a tiny village called Otradnoye. People say this, where, this is where he met his end. And what I say is that it's time to return Revsky's shield to its rightful place. Hang it in this bar to bring back some historical splendor. Who knows, perhaps it will make life here a little brighter. What do you say? Will you help me return the shield? What will I get for it? Oh, of course, I've talked to some activists in the city as well as the owner of this emporium. Together, they are ready to chip in 600 rubles for the person who brings back Rovsky's shield. What do you say? Well, that the reward could be higher. It could be, but there will be time to discuss that after you find the shield. So what do you think about the quest? Well, actually, it sounds like a good idea. I'll bring it back. By the way, we only need to find one more. The man is glowing with happiness. Really, this is wonderful. The best news I've had in a year at least. Please return when you have done this good deed for our city. Okay, okay, bye. Yeah, that is actually nice. So... Nice, nice, nice. That's Ivan Yegor. So, and let's talk to the barkeep. Oh, he is quite the fellow, huh? A plump barkeep is cleaning the glasses, pouring booze for some of his patrons and chatting up the others. As we walk up, he plunks a nice clean glass down on the bar and says, and we notice the glass is clean. Ah, new customer. Never seen you here before and I know all the locals. All of them, huh? Maybe you can tell me something interesting. That depends on what you find interesting. How's it going? Everything's fine. Whether there's war, it's peacetime. People will always need a strong drink. Even more so during wartime. So we are not going bankrupt anytime soon. Oh, uh, that's for sure. Um, what can you tell me about yourself? Name's Petr Kirilovich, originally from Uglich. I've been working in pubs since I was 10. Priceless experience. The patrons like and respect me and vice versa. We can hear people mumbling in the hall. Some barkeep you are. With price so high, you're more of a crook. Petr ignores the comments with no sign of being offended. My customer adore, customers adore me. What can I say? Yeah, seems like it. Anyway, um, how's life in Krasnosnameni? It's a big city and pretty rich too. Krasnosnameni is the Rome of this region. The streets are safe even at night. It's everything an honest, hardworking person could wish for. Well, is that so great? Can I ask a few more questions? Yeah? Anything interesting happening late lately? I don't want to sound like some gossiping washerwoman, but I think someone is letting drugs pass through the border guard fortress north of here. Me and some other people believe one of the guards is somehow connected to the drug cartels. If experience has taught me anything, if one of them is on it, likely they all are. Okay, interesting. A know any other juicy rumors? Started reading that famous old writer Trudov. Nice prose, although a bit on the smutty side. Smut? Puff! Krrr! My, my blood and sweat soaked pages contain no such thing. You must have mistaken me for some corrupt westerners. <laughs> uh, sorry, didn't mean to upset your grandpa. Dementia is no joke. <laughs> How interesting, no? Any other juicy rumors? 
There's this rumor about an expedition from Atom getting lost somewhere in the wastes. Nobody knows where they are now or where they were going. How interesting. And something else? Well, right nearby the pub, my friend. Um, I mean, this guy I barely know sells lottery tickets. They say you can really win big. Why not take a chance and buy one for yourself? Yeah, well, we would do that, actually. But I fear that we will not be here in time. Or the Sunday or Saturday, what is what it was. But if we are, then we are buying one. But right now, like staying here for three days or so, it's uh, it's a waste of time. Well, do you know any other juicy rumors? No, just that. Okay. So let's see what you have. Oh, we've got all the liquor and cucumbers, of course, right? Gorilka, cognac, moonshine, yeah, beer. Port wine and the vodka, okay. Okay then, so let's change the subject. Is there anything else? No. Okay then, thanks. So, and I think this is where we can end this episode. Um. Yeah, we found out a little bit. And we are going to find out more in there next episode. And then I think we are going uh, into the catacombs. No? Because the time is still 21... 20... Twenty uh, hundred. And um, I think like, well, maybe when it's getting dark or something, we should go to the gypsy, huh? Or like through the mummy and, and check them out. Yeah, but let's see. Okay, then. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments you wish to share, please uh, share them in the comment section. I'm sure I'm not the only one who would appreciate that. And yeah, you are very welcome to click the like button and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so never ever miss an episode again so next time bye bye